Beth McDonald Sewing and Vacuum, and I'm here to show you this week's foot of the week, although I'm calling it the attachment of this week because this is more than a foot. So some of you may remember two or three years ago, Husqvarna Viking and Foff came out with a new binding attachment, and uh, it's called the Quilt Binder, and we were also excited because it was going to be able to stitch the front and back of your binding to the quilt at the same time, which is a very time-saving um, activity. Well, um, some quilters decided not to purchase this attachment because of the way it handles the binding fabric. So um, that original attachment leaves you with just a single layer of fabric because of the way it folds the fabric just a single layer of fabric on the binding of your quilt and m many of you who are experienced quilters will know that on a traditional binding you are you have a double layer of fabric on that binding edge so this is a three inch wide strip that I've folded in half and it's going to go onto the quilt with the new binder this way, which is going to leave us with two layers of fabric along that outside edge of the quilt. So hopefully that will last a little bit longer. And that was the concern is that the bindings would not last. So I am going to show you how to use the new quilt binding attachment. And um, again, it is available for Fox foff and viking machines uh, for husqvarna viking it's available for a variety of machines classified as eight and nine if you need help figuring out whether your machine qualifies we can look that up for you um, and for the foff machines the same thing applies these uh, binders work for machines classified as l and j machines so um let me show you how the attachment fits onto the machine. I already have it on here uh, because I was working with it a little bit earlier. Um, so it comes with this plate that fits onto your stitch plate. So it's got a screw hole up here and there's a hole right here on your stitch plate um, where that will fit. And then there's a thumb screw that you can use to just tighten that up. So that's, gonna, that's the piece that's going to hold the attachment. Now when the attachment comes in the box, it looks like this. Um, and you're going to need to unfold this uh, loopy piece right here. Um, because that's what's going to control your binding for you as it goes into the attachment. Now there are two more screws and a couple of washers in the uh, box. And... You're going to fit the attachment right here. Um, it's going to be adjustable here once I get the screws on uh, so that we can either adjust the attachment and or adjust the needle position to get the stitches lined up just where we need them. So again, I'm going to put the washer and the screw there. Excuse my, I know my hand's in the way. I'm just trying to get it on. There, there we go. And then... Um, the other washer and the other screw goes on here. Okay, come on. There. If you get it in the right place, it kind of helps. All right. So I just have those kind of loosely uh, attached. Now, on the Viking side, this uh, attachment comes with two feet. One of the feet is has a straight back, and the other foot has a, a groove or a slot that's cut out of the back of the foot like this. So for Epic 2 owners, you would want to use this uh, foot that has the slot cut out of it. That will accommodate your IDF or integrated dual feed. For those of you who are not Epic 2 users, it has the built-in walking foot that uh, many of the FOF machines have. I'm using the Husqvarna Viking Designer Ruby 90 today, and so I'm going to use the straight back foot. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I have, again, folded my 3-inch binding in half, 
pressed it. So this is an inch and a half wide and I have cut uh, a kind of a wonky point on the end. <laughs> That's just to help the fabric go through the um, binder itself. So then you would sort of just weave this fabric through the end down here that's furthest away from the needle. And then I use my tweezers, but you could use anything sharp and pointy. Oh, and I got it upside down. We want the fold side to go down. So I'm going to put it back in there this time with the fold side down. And it does help to use your tweezers even to throw that or weave that along there. So I've got the fold down and I'm going to tighten this up just for a minute so it doesn't move around on me and use my tweezers now to help me get through the, this fabric through so I can just kind of pull it along with my tweezers and pull it along through there. And then I'm going to take the end and I'm going to pull the end through here and into that underneath the foot until I get that nice fold created on the top and I'm just going to kind of floss it back and forth and then I'm going to pull it back close a little bit closer to the needle and then I can weave my place my uh, quilt <laughs> there we go into the gap between the two pieces of the binding so now there's a fold on the top and a fold on the bottom. So the fold on the bottom is this fold in the fabric and the binder is flipping, creating a fold on the top for us. Now, I think you may be able to see my needle is about halfway into that binding and I don't want it that far over. So I'm going to move the attachment here and I can find uh, tune this with my needle if I need to needle position if I need to all right so I'm going to take my needle down and I'm just going to check well I'd have to put my head in the way so I'm not going to check right now but normally what I would do is check and make sure that I have the needle going through the back side of the binding um, and actually I think I'm going to move my needle over slightly to the left so it looks a little closer to where I would like to have that. All right, and I'm gonna put my needle down. I do have needle down activated on the machine. And now I just get to start sewing. And I'm just gonna kind of watch that, make sure that I have the fold of my binding lining right up with this guide on the foot. And I just sew. Okay, I'm going to double check to make sure it's catching the back of the binding, which it is. That looks pretty good to me. You can tell my thread doesn't match. I just uh, did that on purpose so you could see it a little bit better. And I'm going to go all the way up to my corner. Now you guys get to actually watch me do this for the first time <laughs> ever. So if I'm not successful, I can recommend there's another video on uh, YouTube on the Husqvarna Viking or the FOF page that will show you how to do the corners. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to stitch up to the corner and stop and recommend that you watch that video for the how to turn a corner. Thank you. We appreciate you following us on this series and happy sewing.